Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, in the next couple of videos, we're going to show you how to uh, repair a rat tail tang uh, knife in this case. I've seen swords made the same way. Um, I picked this up. It's one of those fantasy knives. Um, I don't have the back pommel anymore. Um, I actually never got it with it. Um, so we don't even know what it looked like. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of time to do some research, see what I can find out and uh, see if I can find what it looks like, you know, or something close enough to it. Um, I do know this is made out of some kind of animal bone for the main handle. So anyways, um, we, the problem is, is, of course, pommel's gone. We're missing about this much of the tang, right? So we got this taken apart. I already did some things ahead of time just to, you know, pre-prep. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a ch chunk of this tang off so we're about the same width as this replacement uh, piece, which is actually a um, quarter inch threaded rod. And I've uh, ground down the top here and the bottom. So we're going to uh, cut it off about here roughly. Okay. And then we're going to take our Dremel and we're going to cut a, a slice on the top side and on the bottom on the threaded rod as well as on the tang so when we weld it together it's going to have a lot of new metal in there um, it'll make it um, more stronger and, and everything so uh, let's get started with this and we'll uh, start doing our dremel work to this now I made the threaded rod long enough so that where I cut it, I'm going to show you this here on the vise. There we go. When you uh, assemble these things here, so we're figuring about here. So by the time you get the handle on there, we've got lots of excess that's going to be sticking out that we can trim down after we make the pommel. And we'll uh, cut it off after we attach it all. And um, Clean it up nice and it'll look really good when it's done. So, we've got our Dremel out here. So we want to measure our width. say right about there. That's about where we're going to want it. Let's get that squared up on the sander. So 
So, next is to cut the, the slot I was mentioning. We got the grooves cut in our knife here. Now we got to do the same thing to the threaded bar. What's left now to do is to weld these two pieces together. Yep, and we've got it just the right width. So we're doing really good there. Alright. Okay. Put our Dremel away so we're done with it. Okay, so next part is going to be welding this thing and uh, doing the clean up and start some of the assembly to see what kind of um, space we're going to have actually left and whatnot. Um, so stay tuned for part two and there's going to be a part three to this as well, likely. If not, there will definitely be a one and two for sure because this is one. So uh, we'll see you on part two and uh, be right back. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, this is part two, and I've got this set up. All my angles done, you know, up, down, left, right, everything's all set up. So we're going to weld this thing together now, and uh, then we're going to clean up the weld and uh, move on to the next part.
We're just going to run a, uh, a little bit on each side as well. Okay, so let's clean this up on the sander. So we're all welded up and I'll let that cool for a minute and then we'll uh, test out the uh, little hand guard thing and the finger guard and the uh, handle and see how it looks. But uh, We are definitely going to go into a part three because we still got to do the back pommel to attach it all. Uh, but um, this is part two. And the idea between to get these grooves on each piece is to let the bead from the weld go into the metal it gives a little bit better penetration but also gives it more strength because you're you're adding more metal through to the inside between the two joints and you do that on both sides and then your side pieces here you just run a little bit of a bead just to seal up those sides so that it has plenty of strength this way and this way so then you've got good total strength all the way around Looks like we got that on there pretty good. Should be okay to test it. Okay, where's our finger guard? Do, 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 do. I don't know what's around. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're going to have to, didn't account for this, 
Okay, so we're going to have to shave down the sides of the threads along each side evenly. So this will slip over and just leave side threads because that's all we're going to need anyway. It's good that I made a mistake. It happens. Easily fixed it. into the vise just like that and uh, that'll actually help cool off the uh, metal a little quicker okay now I gotta find a quarter inch nut just to verify our threads are good goes on good. So we're good there. So I'll just clamp the weld a little bit more so the handle can slip past all this. a good thing I made the mistake of um, putting this on without checking this first so 
because it's good to have that flat spot on each side and at least once it's attached to the blade it's a lot easier to get that flat spot in just the right um, place you need it. Now these handles only seem to go on one way. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just zoom out so that you can get a good view of this. So we got a quarter inch threaded nut here, so we'll just pop this on. All right, so now we've got our knife back together. Now it's just a matter of making that top pommel piece to go on the top. So we're going to decide, you know, how big we want to make it. Put it on, bolt it in place, cut off the excess we don't need, and our knife will be finished. So uh, stay tuned for part three. This thing's actually pretty sharp too. There you go. So stay tuned for part three, and that's going to be... Uh, when we do the the pommel on it now i'm still trying to decide if i'm going to do out of wood or out of metal but i'm going to go research the internet for a little bit first try and see if i can find this knife to see what the original one looked like and if it was metal then it shouldn't be too do, too too difficult to uh, reproduce that on my lathe and uh, make a new one so anyways um thanks for watching stay tuned for uh, part three when we have this knife all finished Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Okay, we've made our pommel. I ended up having to make it out of uh, coco bolo wood, which is a Mexican rosewood. And uh, this is my first time ever doing this, so, you know, take it easy on me. But uh, what I had to do was turn down a piece on my metal lathe, actually, uh, that I already had that was rounded. Um, and I turned it down and traced and got my markings and whatnot and uh, then I attached it on there super tight and uh, with the nut and uh, then of course as I was making my taper it uh, of course goes into the nut so which is okay um, it's not a problem the uh, I couldn't find anywhere online where I could find an actual picture of this knife to see what the original pommel looked like so I just kind of got creative made my own so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to clean this handle up really nice and clean and because uh, there's sawdust on it and uh, then we're going to tape off the uh, the blade and the guard and leave all this exposed and then we're going to put varathane a couple coats of varathane on here to make it look really nice and uh, then we'll have uh, the part for this video which will actually be the completed part I was um, considering putting on um, on this part, uh, making the whole thing, and but you're talking about uh, at least a good 45 minutes worth of messing around just to make the uh, the wooden piece for the pommel and everything. So, you know, I didn't want uh, to bore the hell out of you guys, so I figured I'd skip a little bit and uh, get into this part. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this off. I'm going to get some uh, varathane and we're going to spray this and uh so i can show you the spraying process because we'll likely do that outside and uh at least for the first coat or two and uh then i'll do the final part of this video which will be the completed knife all done and you know because it's probably going to take at least three or four coats of varathane just to soak into the uh, coca bowl where the pores are open and um so we're going to do that and uh we'll see you back here shortly Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, we got the painter's tape, covered her up as much as we need to. And uh, we're gonna give her a shot of Varathane. 
this will be a real good idea to show how well it makes it all the wood in that pop and this bone handle. Okay, I'm just going to go out here and spray it. Okay, so this is the first coat, and while it's wet, it's going to actually give you a real good idea how it's going to look. That cocoa bowl is some really nice wood. I really love working with cocoa bowl wood. But for my first one, hey, it's not bad. Even the, the bone handle, um, it's going to absorb and soak in a lot of this varathane. And this is uh, the stuff I use is professional varathane in a spray can. And uh, I use this even on the gun grips that we make. Well, sorry, used to make because we quit uh, a few months back. And uh, that stuff is just the bomb in the spray can. You know, especially once you learn to use it right, you'll never get a run and just beautiful uh, the way it shows off uh, woods especially exotic ones so okay so this concludes this part so the next part you're gonna see is the complete finished knife and then I'm gonna do a slideshow video for you guys uh, of all my fantasy knives in my collection that I have including a couple of swords that are fantasy swords and uh, so we'll see you uh, on the next video uh, this is, by the way, going to take about 24 hours to dry, so we'll uh, see you soon. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, this is part five, and I made this whole video, of course, as you know, all is one. But anyhow, uh, our knife is completely done, and I uh, thought I'd give you a view of uh, what it all looks like now. And uh, I'll just... Going in close on here instead of zooming stuff, but uh, that's what we got. So that's how you uh, fix a rat tail tanged knife. And uh, if I come across any more broken knives, I'll definitely uh, do some videos on them as well. And it's kind of funny they didn't put uh, etching on both sides of this blade, but I guess normally this would probably be on a plaque, but I don't have a plaque for it, so I'm going to have to make one, but it uh, actually turned out really nice. Anyway, um, so that's it, and uh, thanks for watching.